SpaceX's eighth Starship flight, a crucial test of orbital capabilities, ended in a partial failure. The launch, initially promising, encountered setbacks during the ascent, culminating in the loss of the upper stage. This setback follows a similar incident in a previous test flight. The mission was designed to showcase the system's readiness for carrying payloads into orbit. The failure highlights the complexities and challenges inherent in developing cutting-edge space technology. This article will analyze the details of the launch attempt and investigate the issues leading to the mission's premature end, ultimately emphasizing the difficulties and complexities of testing such a complex system. Despite the engine problems, the Super Heavy booster successfully landed, showcasing improvements in the landing system's precision. Upgrades to the booster's avionics, including a more advanced flight computer, enhanced its navigation and control capabilities. These advancements enabled a controlled descent and touchdown, demonstrating the improved precision and reliability of the landing procedures. The successful landing, despite partial engine failure, highlights the progress made in developing and refining the landing system. This section focuses on the positive aspect of the booster landing and the notable improvements in the system, despite the problems. The upper stage, Starship 34, experienced a catastrophic failure, marked by a fire on a Raptor vacuum engine. This likely triggered a cascade of failures, leading to the eventual loss of multiple engines. The fire, potentially caused by a leak in the engine's cooling system, highlights the critical role of the regenerative cooling system in high-performance rocket engines. This section analyzes the catastrophic failure of the upper stage, focusing on the potential causes, such as cooling system issues and engine malfunctions, and their implications for future designs. Understanding the reasons behind the fire and the subsequent engine failures is crucial to ensuring future success. SpaceX is investigating potential causes of the engine failure, including pressure surges, combustion instability, and issues with the redesigned propellant distribution system. These factors might have contributed to the observed leaks and cascading engine failures. The article emphasizes the need for thorough analysis to identify the precise cause. The investigation will inform design modifications for future Starship flights, aiming to prevent similar issues. This section highlights the crucial investigation phase, aiming to pinpoint the root cause of the failures and implement preventive measures in future designs. The Flight 8 anomaly yielded crucial data on potential system weaknesses, insights not readily obtainable from simulations or ground tests. This valuable information will inform future design iterations and operational strategies. The analysis of the flight data, encompassing engine performance, debris behavior, and other observations, offers vital feedback for improvement. SpaceX's iterative development approach allows learning from setbacks, and this incident will undoubtedly lead to crucial design modifications. The failure serves as a critical learning experience to enhance the reliability and safety of future Starship flights. The FAA's investigation into the Starship 8 anomaly underscores the critical safety protocols in place for rocket launches. The investigation will determine the need for design modifications to prevent future occurrences. SpaceX's launch activities will likely be paused until the investigation concludes and corrective actions are implemented. The FAA's involvement emphasizes the importance of safety and thorough assessments of launch-related incidents, showcasing the rigorous safety standards governing spaceflight. This investigation is vital for ensuring future launch success and preventing similar incidents. SpaceX's Starship Flight 8 began successfully, with a spectacular liftoff in the initial ascent stages proceeding as planned. However, problems emerged during the crucial booster return burn phase Two of the 10 center engines failed to reignite, hindering the booster's controlled descent. This mirrored a similar issue in a previous flight, prompting concerns about the robustness of the system. This section focuses on the sequence of events during the return burn, highlighting the critical failure point that led to the mission's subsequent setbacks. The analysis concentrates on the technical details of the engine failures and their impact on the planned mission. Despite the setback, SpaceX remains committed to its ambitious development timeline. Preparations for the subsequent flight, Flight 9, are already underway, including rigorous testing of the Super Heavy booster. This demonstrates a commitment to learning from past failures and improving the design. This iterative approach underscores SpaceX's dedication to pushing the boundaries of space technology. 
The planned Flight 9 will be crucial in verifying the implemented design changes and ensuring reliability before future orbital attempts. The article emphasizes that setbacks are integral to the learning process and crucial in improving future spacecraft designs. Twin test flight explosions show SpaceX is no longer defying gravity. Consecutive losses of the Starship rocket suggest that the company's engineers are not as infallible as its fans may think. For SpaceX, 2025 should have been the best year yet. Elon Musk, the founder of the private space company, is one of the most influential people in the Oval Office. And President Trump has endorsed his vision of sending humans to Mars. But so far, it has not been a great year for the rocket company. The vehicle that is central to the Mars goal, SpaceX's giant Starship rocket, has launched twice this year, and twice it has blown up. The latest explosion occurred on Thursday during the eighth test flight of Starship, less than two months after the seventh test flight also came apart in space. Again, a shower of debris rained down, creating a novel headache for travelers around Florida and the Caribbean, who were unaccustomed to seeing falling space debris as the reason for flight delays. Neither incident injured anyone. Explosions are not necessarily failures for a company that has thrived on a mindset of launch it, break it, fix it, launch again. With innovations like landing and reusing rocket boosters, SpaceX has slashed the cost of sending stuff to space, Starship, designed to be fully reusable, has the potential to upend the rocket business once again. But these two Starship explosions were a step backward in SpaceX's development process, as the flights could not even repeat the successes of earlier test flights, and they perhaps show that the company's engineers are not as infallible as fans of the company sometimes like to think. There's this persona that has built up around SpaceX, but you're starting to see that they're human too said Daniel Dumbacker, a former NASA official who is now a professor of engineering practice at Purdue University and chief innovation and strategy officer for Special Aerospace Services, an engineering and manufacturing company whose customers include NASA, the United States Space Force, and some of SpaceX's competitors. The delays could also have repercussions for NASA, which hired SpaceX to use a version of Starship to land astronauts on the moon as soon as 2027 during the Artemis III mission. The two lost starships, which both failed less than 10 minutes after liftoff, were an upgraded design. Discouragingly, they were less successful than an older version of Starship that flew last year. Three previous test flights successfully coasted halfway around the world, survived re-entry through the atmosphere over the Indian Ocean, and then simulated landings in the waters off the west coast of Australia. In addition, the failures of the seventh and eighth flights occurred at about the same part of the flight, and both appeared to originate near the engines of the second stage spacecraft. That suggests that SpaceX did not successfully diagnose and solve the problem. It could point to a significant design flaw in the upgraded Starship. That also means that SpaceX has so far been unable to test aspects of the updated Starship design including smaller and repositioned forward flaps used to guide the spacecraft as it falls through the air during re-entry. SpaceX also planned to test a Pez-like dispenser for deploying its Starlink internet satellites. Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built, is central to Mr. Musk's dreams of building human settlements on Mars. A frequent cadence of Starship launches is also crucial to SpaceX's more immediate plans to make money. The next generation of satellites for its Starlink Internet from Space service are bigger and heavier. The voluminous cargo space of the Starship upper stage would allow the company to replenish its constellation of thousands of orbiting satellites quickly and cheaply. The test flight failures also mean that SpaceX's development program has not been able to move on to other objectives. Editor's Picks Step off the number one train and into Lenox. How Operation Mincemeat a very British hit, was fine-tuned for Broadway. Thinking about menopause hormone therapy? Start here. SpaceX needs to demonstrate that Starship can stay in orbit for an extended period of time and then drop out of orbit and return to the launch site to be caught by the mechanical arms on the launch tower. The super heavy booster stage, which does not go to orbit, has successfully done this three times. The company also needs to show that it can launch several starships in quick succession. Most critically, it needs to show that it can move liquid oxygen and methane propellants from one starship to another. 
That procedure is key to allowing a starship to accumulate enough fuel to go to the moon or Mars. Thus, the starship that is to reach the moon will have to remain in Earth orbit as other starships are launched to bring up propellants to refill the lunar lander starship's tanks. Mr. Musk has asserted that propellant transfer is a straightforward exercise, but pumping that much liquid that quickly while floating in orbit has never been attempted, and no one knows yet how many starship launches, perhaps as many as 20, will be needed for a single moon mission. We just don't know how the tank performance is going to be. Ahmet Kshatriya, Deputy Associate Administrator for NASA's Moon to Mars program, said in December at a media event focused on Artemis at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We just don't. At the time, Mr. Kshatriya said NASA would learn that soon because the long duration version of Starship was expected to launch in the spring. Then SpaceX could also test its ability to operate two Starships in orbit simultaneously and determine how efficiently it can move propellants between two spacecraft. Those findings in turn would help NASA put together a realistic schedule for Artemis III. Within a year, we're going to have a really good understanding of that problem, Mr. Kshatriya said. But I can't schedule that innovation. There's no way to. But the schedule Mr. Kshatriya described assumed there would not be major setbacks. With the Federal Aviation Administration grounding Starship until SpaceX completes an investigation of the Flight 8 failure, the debut of the long-duration Starship may be delayed to the middle of the year, or longer. Mr. Dumbacker thinks that SpaceX will be able to solve the technical challenges posed by Starship. I have no doubt that they'll get it addressed and they'll get flying again and they'll get things fixed, he said. I just don't know how long it's going to take them to do that. In testimony to a House committee last month, Mr. Dumbacker said the Starship system with the multitude of fueling flights was too big and too complicated to meet the current target date of 2027 for Artemis III or even 2030, when China plans to land astronauts on the moon. Mr. Dumbacker even proposed that NASA switch to a smaller, simpler lander to improve the chances that NASA can win the 21st century moon race with China. As SpaceX is supposed to conduct a demonstration of its Starship lander without any astronauts aboard before Artemis III, a successful astronaut landing on the moon using Starship could require as many as 40 launches. He did not regard the chances of that many successful launches as high. I need to get that number of launches dramatically reduced, Mr. Dumbaker said during the hearing. I need to go simple. 